Chair Harper, we are live. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Welcome, everybody. I'll call the meet. I'll call to order the meeting of the Executive Committee of Tennessee Tech University. And uh, Secretary Ray, if you would call the roll, please. Trustee Jones. Here. Can you simultaneously hear and speak to the committee members? Please identify, uh, can you, <laughs> I'm running through this quickly. Can you simultaneously <laughs> hear and speak to the committee members? I can see and hear and no one else is present. You got it, okay. Trustee Van Heuser. I can see and hear and nobody is present. All right, thank you. And Trustee Harper. I can also see in here and I'm here by myself. You know the questions well. You have a quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. So before we get started with our business, I need to make it, we need to make a determination of necessity. So let me just uh, brief you all on that. Pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated Section 8-44-108B3, if a physical quorum is not present at the location of a meeting of a governing body, then in order for a quorum of members to participate by electronic or other means of communication, the governing body must make a determination that a necessity exists. And we have facts and circumstances that necessitate a meeting without a quorum physically present today. And those are one, that the board is required to consider the important and time sensitive matter of appointing a new vice president for student affairs. Number two, the board is meeting via teleconference in recognition of the need to act on these important matters. And three, these facts and circumstances necessitate a meeting without a quorum physically present. So I'd entertain a motion by a committee member to uh, determine that a necessity exists to allow members of this committee to participate by telephone. I'd make a motion of necessity for this online meeting. Thank you. So, Ms. Van Hooser, did you second? I'm sorry. Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. I talked over you, sorry. So uh, we'll take a roll call vote on the, the determination of necessity. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Van Hooser. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Unanimous vote, Madam Chair. So that motion carries. So we will now take up the important business to come before us today. And that is that the president, President Oldham is requesting the executive committee to approve the appointment of Dr. Cynthia Polk Johnson to the position of vice president for student affairs. And before we have any further business, I think we ought to hear from Dr. Polk Johnson and we're very glad to have you with us today. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Harper. Uh, I appreciate everyone allowing me to be here today. I'm super excited about this meeting and opportunity to speak with you. Um, thank you, President Oldham and all the folks I've met so far. Uh, it's been great to uh, be there on your campus at one point and really get to talk and communicate with many of the community members. Uh, if you've had an opportunity to just review my resume, you can see that I've dedicated my life service to serving students in higher education. I do believe in the transformation of lives and even generations uh, as it relates to informing and educating our community. And so that's where I've spent my life service on uh, large research one institutions to small private uh, colleges and universities. And so this opportunity as it presented itself was something that I felt was a very good fit for me. Uh, and looking at the institution as a whole and the many accolades uh, and the dedicated staff and faculty that already serve the institution to the dedicated students and the community there at Tennessee Tech. So that's why I'm here today <laughs> and, and happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, does anyone have questions and we, we We'll obviously be taking a vote, but and, and this does not need to be limited to committee members. I see we have, uh, it's certainly Thomas Lynn is on with us, and I don't know, oh, Radonna Rose is with us, Dan Alcott is with us, um, uh, Daniel Amen. Hines, who is, uh, who is rolling off in just a few days. We're going to miss you terribly. Is there anyone else on? I'm having to scroll through here. And certainly a number of staff, but are any, or administration rather, are any of you, would any of you all like to ask questions? 
that this is Thomas Lynn. Welcome. Thank you. I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, but uh, I'd be curious to see where have you served in, in summary. Maybe everybody else knows it but me, but yes. I'd be interested to hear your background. Sure. So I got my start actually at my alma mater, which is uh, Mississippi State University down there in the great city of Stark, Vegas. Uh, and I got that start over 24 years ago, serving as an enrollment counselor. Uh, so I recruited for the institution, um, you know, serving students, working with alumni, faculty and staff, uh, fellow staff members uh, to recruit students for the university. We did parent family orientation. We did all of the parent family programs actually fell under the purview of our office. And so I got my start there. Again, uh, over 24 years ago, I then transitioned to a role in residence life at my alma mater where I served students in the residence halls, uh, serving as a, a hall director, graduate hall director. Moved on from there and came to Memphis uh, to Rhodes College, a small private uh, institution. At that time, it was roughly about 1,700 students. So I've served at Rhodes College, uh, which is a small private liberal arts, to and left Rhodes and then went on to the University of Georgia, uh, a research one, as you well know, large institution, uh, and was there for a few years until I transitioned to Bethune Cookman University in uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, which is a small private HBCU. And so from there, I went to uh, the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and, and was there for a couple of years serving students in the Dean of Students office as an associate dean uh, and serving students in a very meaningful way, everything from uh, anything you can imagine outside the classroom, working with the faculty on many of the concerns, uh, helping to address any issues around food insecurity, homelessness, housing issues, academic and personal concerns. Uh, and then now serving uh, with Kip Memphis as a college persistence advisor. Um, this was actually a position that kind of landed uh, on me due to having to move home, making a conscious decision to move home to be a caregiver for my dad at the time. And so with that, uh, I'm now uh, interested in joining the team at Tennessee Tech as the Vice President for Student Affairs, bringing all those many years of experience uh, that I've had under my belt uh, to serve our students there. Well, thank you very much. It's a very impressive. Uh, Stark Vegas and Cook Vegas are, have a lot in common, I hope. <clears throat> thank you. Anyone else have questions, Tom? I'm curious, just what motivated you about Tennessee Tech and coming to Cookville? Sure. So having been in Tennessee and learning about many of the institutions in the state, of course, when I saw the position out there, I applied before the pandemic hit, actually. And of course, you know, the, the uh, search was delayed for very good reasons. Um, and, but I continued to express my interest in the position, uh, given the many, again, accolades of the institution, being that I noticed that one of the things that caught my attention right offhand was the students first philosophy, uh, which is something that resonated with me and has always been a part of my uh, role in terms of student affairs um, and serving students on many different campuses. So Tennessee Tech stands out. It's a small college campus, uh, you know, college town. And I really enjoy that about uh, many of the institutions I've had an opportunity to work at. This is no different. I see the, the community engagement. I see how excited students are on the campus. All of those things are very attractive to me. And I also see growth. Uh, an opportunity for growth, not just personal, uh, but professional growth. And I see how the community is growing. Uh, the community has wrapped its arms around the university and I can see where it's just going to higher heights. So that's very attractive to me. Excellent, is there anyone else with a question? Yeah, Trudy, this is Teresa. Uh, just a, a quick question in one of our goals that we've had since really becoming a board is about increasing the diversity at the university. Um, can you talk a little bit about how some ideas you may have in helping us to reach that goal? Sure. So I've uh, had an opportunity to review the Tech Tomorrow plan, and I'm right on board with that. I've worked at many institutions where diversity uh, numbers have been low. 
Um, and there have been opportunities to collaborate with admission staff to make sure that there's a, again, when I started in this field, I was a recruiter. I was the only African-American enrollment counselor on our team at Mississippi mm -hmm. State. And so my job was to identify a territory and work that work the schools in that area uh, to make sure that our yield constantly increased. And so I think you have to start with admissions. I know that the university has already identified a chief diversity officer. That speaks loudly uh, when you're talking about increasing diversity at the institution coming from the top uh, you know, all the way trickling through the entire organization and really becoming a part of the fabric of the institution. I think all of those things are important. So I've worked with multicultural affairs on, on many different campuses that I've served to help recruit, retain, and, and graduate <laughs> students of color uh, and many other students as well. Uh, but I think those are things that you do. Also, we provide an opportunity for student support services to step up in a mighty way to show that we not only want to get you here, we, we, we know that you matter and you belong here. And so we provide services that are exceptional. We highlight your successes uh, and show that, you know, we have great students on our campus who are going on to, do, to be great alums. And so being able to connect them with community resources, uh, connect them to community organizations. And uh, so they go on to be, you know, great um, instruments, uh, so to speak, of the institution uh, is something that I've constantly worked towards through my, uh, through my tenure in higher ed. Excellent. Anything else? Well, I think you have made an excellent recommendation, Dr. Oldham, and I'm very excited to uh, entertain a motion to approve the president's request to appoint Dr. Cynthia Polk Johnson to the position of vice president for student affairs. This is Tom Jones. I move that we approve Cynthia Polk Johnson for the position of vice president of student affairs. I second, Ms. Teresa Van Hooser. Thank you, Mr. Jones, for making the motion. Ms. Van Hooser for seconding. Is there any further discussion? And feel free, if you're a board member, feel free to speak up, even if you're not a member of the executive committee. Okay, hearing no discussion, I'll call for a roll call vote. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Van Hooser. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Unanimous vote, Madam Chair. And so that motion carries, and we are very excited, Dr. Polk Johnson, to have you on board. We could not be more pleased. and. Uh, we, and, and as Ms. Van Hooser said, we're very excited about the diversity no, aspect that you can help us with, but also with so many other, uh, how you're getting applause and thumbs up. I love that. Uh, if I knew how to do that, I would do it too, but I'm completely inadequate. But anyway, we, uh, we're very delighted that we are going to have you and that you are going to be a good fit, I think, just based on the way you speak to all of us. It seems very natural and I think you're gonna be a great fit for our team. Um, I, I should mention before I get too far, I, I had a note that uh, Fred Lowry is on vacation this week, but I know he sends his regards. And I had a text from Barry Wilmore, our resident astronaut board member who said he couldn't be here today because he is doing spacewalk training in the pool. And as I said to him, and I've said it more times than one, he always wins the prize for having the best excuse for missing a meeting. I don't know how he manages to do it, but um, we're still, of course, excited for him captaining the Boeing Starliner. Um, is there any other, we, we, to take up any official business, we would need to take a vote, but is there anything else that just needs to come before our group before uh, we adjourn? Chair Harper, yes, sir. if you would, just let me, let me comment real quick. First of all, let me thank, Lee Ray, who chaired the search committee and the search committee, who did a really a wonderful job. Uh, and, and I think everybody can see um, why Cynthia was selected uh, because she is truly outstanding. I want to congratulate her and, and uh, can't wait to get her here on campus. But uh, there were some 140 applicants for this position. So it was an extensive national search. Uh, and the search committee did a really outstanding job of, 
of wading through all that material and narrowing it down. They brought four finalists to campus that were all excellent candidates uh, and uh, made made the decision fairly difficult. But uh, but uh, I, I know we got the best and, and Cynthia, welcome. Thank you so very much. I'm glad to be a part of the team and community. Thank you. And I'm sure you've been told you're following in literally and figuratively big shoes. <laughs> Mark Barnett, I, I haven't actually looked at his feet, but I bet they're big. And the big man. So we're very excited for that. Thank you all so very much. Do we have a start date? Good uh, question. Yeah, I think, uh, Cynthia, you still good for July 6th? Yes, July 6th. Wow, that's great. All right. I know well, Cynthia let's... could use some help finding a house, Thomas <laughs> yeah. or Tom, our Cookville people, yeah. or anybody on cabinet. It's, it's it's quite a task right now, as you all know. So any thoughts, just give me a call and we'll get you in contact with her. There's, and Daniel, there's one you're more house there. left. So I'm sorry. There's, a, there's one more house left. So <laughs> you better call quick. <laughs> Right use car leaving the lot, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Daniel, you're working on uh, on um, orientation. How's that going? It's good. It's good. We are four sessions We're going into our fourth session of eleven this summer, and so excited that you know through President Oldham's uh, full flight plan and everything, we're able to continue to bring families back on campus this summer. Um, and welcome into campus for orientation. I think it makes a big impact on students selecting what university to go to is having that on-campus connection during orientation. Well, thank you for serving in that role, Daniel. All right, is there anything else to come before this group? Well, then I will see you all. Just make a note that we're starting our board meeting, I think at 7.30, is that right, Lee? That's correct. In order on, to get through the amount of business we have, 7.30 on the 24th of June, Thursday. Gotcha. All right. Well, we will see all of you then in person, I hope. And if we don't see in person, we will see you virtually, I'm sure. So thanks again for your afternoon. And, and Dr. Polk Johnson, we are very thrilled to have you. And Lee's giving us a thumbs up. I, I mean, wings up. Wings up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. I'll call us adjourned, by the way. Thanks, everybody. I'll be in touch. Cynthia, I'll give you a call. Okay, thank you.